not for me. It's just like it was five years ago. Nothing's happened. In the early stages of producing Johnny Guitar, director Nicholas Ray had Joan Crawford in mind for the lead role. Known for her strong personality, Crawford was perfect for the part of Vienna, a saloon owner accused of harboring outlaws. She brought intensity and depth to the character, making her stand out on screen. For the male leads, Sterling Hayden was cast as Johnny Guitar, a former gunslinger who goes by the name John McIvers. Hayden's rugged charm made him an ideal fit for the enigmatic character. Mercedes McCambridge played Emma Small, a vengeful cattle rancher set on driving Vienna out of town. Their intense rivalry became one of the central conflicts of the film. Scott Brady portrayed the dancing kid, leader of a gang hiding near Vienna Saloon. Initially, Ray wanted Marlon Brando for the part, but ultimately went with Brady due to his proven versatility. Ward Bond appeared as John Mackey, the local marshal manipulated by Emma. Despite initial disagreements between Bond and Ray over the direction of the character, they eventually reached a compromise. Casting for the film began as early as 1953, when Republic Pictures announced it would produce Johnny Guitar. Auditions took place throughout Hollywood, with many actors trying out for various roles before the final decisions were made. Chemistry tests between main cast members helped determine compatibility and reinforce character dynamics. Notably, Crawford insisted on having McCambridge play against type as Emma after seeing her performance in All the King's Men. This choice added tension and unpredictability to their scenes together. Meanwhile, Hayden initially struggled to find common ground with Crawford off-screen, yet managed to translate that friction seamlessly onto film. The result was a unique blend of Western tropes combined with melodramatic flair, a testament to the visionary approach behind the casting of Johnny Guitar. Johnny Guitar, directed by Nicholas Ray, is a unique Western film that stands out for its unconventional approach to the genre. The movie was released in 1954 and has since become a classic known for its distinct style and powerful storytelling. Ray's vision for Johnny Guitar was heavily influenced by his background in film noir. He brought a sense of psychological complexity to the Western genre, using striking visuals and symbolic imagery to convey the character's inner turmoil. The director's use of deep focus and wide-angle lenses created a sense of depth and space, making the film's desert setting an integral part of the story. Collaboration was key to Ray's filmmaking process. He worked closely with his cast and crew, encouraging improvisation and exploration. For Johnny Guitar, he assembled a talented team, including cinematographer Harry Stradling and composer Victor Young. Their combined efforts resulted in a film that is both visually stunning and emotionally resonant. Ray's collaboration with the film's lead actress, Joan Crawford, was particularly noteworthy. Crawford, known for her strong personality, embraced Ray's vision and delivered a powerful performance as Vienna, the film's strong-willed protagonist. Ray and Crawford's collaborative relationship was marked by mutual respect and a shared commitment to the project. Despite its initial mixed reception, Johnny Guitar has endured as a cult classic. Its unique blend of Western and film noir elements, combined with Ray's distinctive directorial style, has made it a film that continues to captivate audiences today. The movie serves as a testament to Ray's prowess as a director and his ability to push the boundaries of genre and style. I'm coming up, Vienna! I'm waiting! Johnny Guitar, a 1954 movie, has stood the test of time as a symbol of the industry. Its enduring qualities are many, but one that stands out is the unique blend of Western and romantic elements. This movie is a fascinating mix of gunfights, bank heists, and emotional conflicts, all wrapped up in a captivating storyline. Throughout the movie, there are many funny, shocking, and sad moments that will keep you engaged. So, keep watching this video to discover some fascinating facts about Johnny Guitar. One of the classic Hollywood actors in this movie that stands out is Sterling Hayden, who played the role of Johnny Guitar. His portrayal of a former gunslinger seeking redemption is both powerful and moving. Now, we would love to hear your stories and memories related to this classic. Did you enjoy watching Sterling Hayden's performance? Or perhaps you have a favorite scene that you'd like to share? Whatever your memory or experience, we would love to hear it in the comments below. As for me, I will never forget the emotional intensity of the final showdown between Johnny Guitar and the villainous Emma Small. 
It's a scene that perfectly encapsulates the themes of love, redemption, and revenge that run throughout the movie. So, whether you're a fan of westerns, romances, or just great storytelling, Johnny Guitar is a movie that deserves your attention. With its enduring qualities, classic Hollywood stars, and unforgettable moments, it's a film that will continue to resonate with audiences for generations to come. This isn't my idea, Vienna. Never mind the talk! Johnny Guitar, a 1954 film, took a unique approach to set design. The movie's production team constructed most of the sets on sound stages, creating a distinct, stylized look. The main street set, for instance, was built on a slope, which added depth and perspective to the scenes. This unconventional design choice made the film's visuals more engaging. The film's locations also played a significant role in its atmosphere. The story is set in the American Southwest, and the production team chose to film in California's Red Rock Canyon and other desert locations. These rugged, isolated settings perfectly captured the film's Old West atmosphere. However, filming in these remote locations presented logistical challenges. The production team had to transport equipment, supplies, and personnel over long distances, which required careful planning and coordination. Despite these challenges, the team managed to capture the stark beauty of the desert landscape, which added to the film's overall impact. The film's production team also employed innovative techniques during filming. For instance, they used a process called day for night to film night scenes. This technique involves underexposing the film during daylight hours to create the illusion of night. This allowed the team to film night scenes without the need for expensive lighting equipment. In addition, the film's director, Nicholas Ray, was known for his innovative use of color. He often used color to convey mood and emotion, and Johnny Guitar is no exception. The film's vivid colors, from the bright red of the main character's hair to the deep blue of the night sky, add depth and richness to the film's visuals. Despite the challenges of filming in remote locations and the innovative techniques employed, the production team managed to create a visually stunning film. The unique set design, striking locations, and innovative techniques all contribute to the film's enduring appeal. Where's Johnny Guitar, a 1954 Western film, offers a unique perspective on the genre through its focus on complex female characters. Directed by Nicholas Ray, the movie stars Joan Crawford as Vienna, a saloon owner accused of harboring criminals. The plot revolves around the tensions between Vienna and Emma Small, played by Mercedes McCambridge, a neighboring rancher who seeks revenge against Vienna. The film stands out due to its unconventional portrayal of women during a time when Western films typically featured men in leading roles. Vienna, the protagonist, displays strength and resilience throughout the story, challenging societal norms and expectations. Meanwhile, Emma embodies jealousy and vengeance, serving as an antagonist who adds depth to the narrative. One notable aspect of Johnny Guitar is its exploration of themes like loyalty and betrayal. As events unfold, various alliances form and dissolve, leaving viewers questioning each character's motives. This complexity contributes to the overall intrigue and keeps audiences engaged until the end. Moreover, the cinematography in Johnny Guitar enhances the storytelling experience. With striking visual compositions and creative camera angles, Ray manages to capture both the vast landscapes of the American West and the intimate moments between characters. These elements work together to create a visually appealing film that remains engaging even today. Lastly, the film features memorable performances from its cast member. Both Crawford and McCambride deliver strong performances, bringing their respective characters to life with conviction and emotion. Sterling Hayden also shines as Johnny Guitar Logan, a former lover of Vienna who finds himself drawn back into her world. Overall, Johnny Guitar provides an exciting departure from traditional Western films by focusing on complex female leads and exploring thought-provoking themes. Its compelling narrative, impressive visuals, and standout performances make it worth watching for fans of classic cinema. He was still a fine man. We want the dancing kidneys bunch. Why come to... Johnny Guitar's score and soundtrack are key elements in setting the film's unique tone. The music, composed by Victor Young, complements the narrative and emotional journey of the characters. The movie's title song, Johnny Guitar, is sung by Peggy Lee and sets the stage for the film's themes of love, loss, and revenge. The use of guitar music throughout the film is a nod to the title character, played by Sterling Hayden. 
The guitar's haunting melodies reflect Johnny's inner turmoil and his past as a gunfighter. The score also features orchestral arrangements, which add a sense of grandeur and drama to the film's desert settings. The film's soundtrack also includes Mexican-inspired tunes, which reflect the southwestern setting of the movie. These musical elements help to create a sense of place and contribute to the film's overall atmosphere. Composer Victor Young's use of lead motifs or recurring musical themes is another notable aspect of the score. For example, the Johnny guitar theme is reprised throughout the film, often when the character of Vienna, played by Joan Crawford, is thinking about him. This musical technique helps to reinforce the film's themes of love and longing. The musicians involved in the creation of the score also played a crucial role. Young worked with a team of talented musicians, including guitarist Barry Galbraith, who provided the film's distinctive guitar melodies. In conclusion, the score and soundtrack of Johnny Guitar are essential components of the film's storytelling. They enhance the narrative and emotional tone, creating a rich and immersive viewing experience. The music's blend of guitar melodies, orchestral arrangements, and Mexican-inspired tunes helps to establish the film's unique atmosphere and contributes to its enduring appeal. Where are they? You've got a rope around. In the filming of Johnny Guitar, certain scenes required unique measures. Horses, for instance, were fitted with blinders to approach waterfalls, as they were too afraid without them. The lead actor, Sterling Hayden, faced his own challenges, being an unusual choice for the title role as he lacked horse riding and guitar playing skills. Despite these challenges, Johnny Guitar has earned its place among esteemed films, gracing Roger Ebert's great movies list. To build something for the future. They should have lived happily ever. One of the most iconic scenes in Johnny Guitar takes place in the saloon owned by Vienna. A tense standoff occurs between her and Emma Small, with the two women facing off across the length of the bar. The camera work here is striking. It captures the tension in their faces, the distance between them, and the looming threat of violence. Director Nicholas Ray uses low-key lighting to create a sense of foreboding, and the close-ups of Crawford and McCambridge's faces highlight the intensity of their emotions. Crawford's performance in this scene is exceptional. She portrays Vienna as a strong and independent woman who is unafraid to stand up to her enemies, even when they outnumber her. At the same time, she conveys a hint of vulnerability beneath Vienna's tough exterior. Crawford later said that playing Vienna was one of her favorite roles because she saw herself in the character's determination and resilience. The impact of this scene on audiences is significant. It encapsulates many of the themes that run throughout the movie, including the struggle for power, the importance of loyalty, and the challenges faced by strong women in a male-dominated society. This scene also highlights the innovative directorial style of Nicholas Ray, who is known for his unconventional approach to filmmaking. Another memorable scene in Johnny Guitar takes place near the end of the movie, when Vienna and Johnny finally confront their feelings for each other, as they sit together in the burning ruins of the saloon. The flames casting flickering shadows on their faces, they confess their love for one another. The chemistry between Crawford and Hayden is palpable, and the raw emotion conveyed in this scene makes it one of the most powerful moments in the film. Once again, the cinematography here is remarkable. The use of fire as a visual metaphor adds depth to the scene, symbolizing both destruction and rebirth. The close-ups of Crawford and Hayden's faces capture the intensity of their emotions, while the wide shots emphasize the desolation surrounding them. Director Nicholas Ray famously said that he wanted to make movies that were like symphonies, with every element working together to create a harmonious whole. In scenes like those described above, he achieved just that. Through masterful direction, stunning cinematography, and powerful performances, Ray created a western unlike any other, one that continues to resonate with audiences more than six decades after its release. We've both done a lot of living. Our problem now is how to do it. In the making of Johnny Guitar, Joan Crawford, who had acquired the rights to the novel and insisted on playing the lead role, initially had her sights set on Claire Trevor for the part of Emma. Crawford's competitive nature was evident in her strained relationship with the younger Mercedes McCambridge, who ended up with the role. Interestingly, the large railroad locomotive model that appears in Vienna's saloon is not a new prop for Johnny Guitar. It's the same one used in the Baron of Arizona. This 440 American-type locomotive bears the number two on its tender. Moreover, Crawford had her eyes on Paul Newman for the role of the dancing kid, 
However, it's Sterling Hayden who ultimately brought this character to life in the movie. Despite these behind-the-scenes details, the film remains a classic, captivating audiences with its unique storyline and memorable performances. There's nothing like a good smoke and a cup of coffee. Released in 1954, Johnny Guitar quickly captured audiences with its unique storyline and memorable characters. This classic western, directed by Nicholas Ray, presented a refreshing twist on traditional gender roles, contributing to lively discussions among viewers. The film features Joan Crawford as Vienna, a strong-willed saloon owner who refuses to conform to societal expectations. Such portrayals were unusual for the time, challenging conventional norms and inspiring women across America. Additionally, Sterling Hayden plays the titular character, Johnny Guitar, a former gunslinger seeking redemption, another uncommon narrative during the mid-1950s Hollywood era. This groundbreaking approach extended beyond just the main cast. Mercedes McCambridge's Emmy-nominated performance as Emma Small brought attention to complex female antagonists rarely seen before. These nuanced representations spark conversations around gender dynamics and ultimately paved the way for future progressive films. Moreover, the cinematography in Johnny Guitar stood out, influencing several aspects of popular culture. The bold color choices and innovative set designs contrasted starkly against typical monochromatic westerns. As a result, the film served as inspiration for various artists, musicians, and even fashion designers embracing vibrancy and non-traditional aesthetics. On a deeper level, Johnny Guitar also tackled pertinent socio-political issues of its day. Set against the backdrop of post-Civil War tensions, the movie explored themes like fear of change, mob mentality, and individual freedom versus collective responsibility. Audiences connected with these topics, making it relatable despite being rooted in a different historical period. Overall, through compelling performances, visual artistry, and thoughtful engagement with contemporary concerns, Johnny Guitar left an indelible mark on both cinema and society. Form settles. Tell me, why did you pick this spot to build? How would you... In the filming of Johnny Guitar, tension between Mercedes McCambridge and Joan Crawford was high resulting in explosive disputes both on and off the set. Matters escalated one night when Crawford, in a fit of anger, discarded McCambridge's costumes along an Arizona highway, forcing cast and crew members to gather them. Despite these conflicts, McCambridge's career included appearances in several esteemed productions. Five of her films, including Johnny Guitar, have earned recognition by the Library of Congress for their cultural, historical, or aesthetic significance. Prior to Sterling Hayden's casting as Johnny Guitar, Robert Mitchum was also considered for the role. However, his studio, RKO, declined to lend him out for the production. 24 hours, the man said. Want me to help you pack? Johnny Guitar, the 1954 Western film, received mixed reviews upon its release. Some critics praised its unique approach to the genre, while others criticized it for being unconventional. The New York Times' Bosley Crowther, for instance, dismissed it as a crazy quilt of Western motifs and saloon bar melodrama. However, the film has since gained a cult following and is now considered a classic. Its unconventional storytelling, symbolic themes, and strong female lead, played by Joan Crawford, have been lauded by many. The film's distinctive visual style, with its bold use of color and innovative set designs, also sets it apart from other Westerns of the era. In terms of awards, Johnny Guitar was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Motion Picture, Drama. While it didn't win, this recognition helped to elevate its status in the film industry. The film's enduring popularity and influence on later Westerns have solidified its place as a significant entry in the genre. The film's accolades not only validate the hard work of those involved in its production, but also highlight the innovative spirit of 1950s Hollywood. They show that even in a genre as established as the Western, there was still room for fresh ideas and new approaches. This classic film continues to inspire and influence filmmakers today, demonstrating the lasting impact of bold and original storytelling. We're gonna get the truth out of him first. Vienna got Jake to open the bank for you, didn't she? Come on, Turkey, tell us. In the movie Johnny Guitar, Sterling Hayden and Joan Crawford, both known for being difficult to work with, shared the screen. Carradine, who appeared in eight films selected for the National Film Registry, including Johnny Guitar, had a notable career. Hayden, who also appeared in five films selected for the National Film Registry, 
including Johnny Guitar, was part of several significant films. Johnny Guitar is not just a movie, it's a piece of cinema history, featuring actors renowned for their work in other culturally significant films. They didn't spend all of it here. He's back in the lab. In the making of Johnny Guitar, tensions ran high between Joan Crawford and Mercedes McCambridge. Known for her intense method acting, McCambridge's immersive approach led her to stay in character even offset. This grated on Crawford, who preferred a more professional atmosphere. At one point, their animosity boiled over when Crawford found horse manure on her director's chair, an act allegedly perpetrated by McCambridge. Nicholas Ray, the film's director, was going through a difficult time personally during the shoot. His tumultuous relationship with Gloria Graham added stress to the set. Their romantic entanglement had begun while they were both married to other people. When Ray learned Graham planned to marry again, he reportedly threw a prop glass at her during filming, narrowly missing her face. Despite these challenges, Ray managed to complete the film, contributing to its unique blend of Western themes and melodramatic tension. Sterling Hayden, who played the titular role of Johnny Guitar, initially disliked the script. He called it the worst piece of crap I ever read, but needed money after losing his savings due to poor investments. During filming, he often clashed with Nicholas Ray over interpretations of scenes and lines. However, despite their differences, Hayden acknowledged Ray's talent, stating, he could get things out of me that nobody else could. Behind the camera, cinematographer Harry Stradling Sr. created the distinctive visual style of Johnny Guitar. Using innovative techniques like wide-angle lenses and color gels, he helped bring Ray's vision to life. Notably, the climactic saloon fire scene pushed boundaries for its era, employing real flames near actors and sets, heightening the dramatic intensity. In the film Johnny Guitar, Joan Crawford, who was 49 at the time, took on the lead role with Sterling Hayden, age 37, and Scott Brady, age 29, as her love interests. The movie, released in 1954, was part of a package deal with Roy Chancellor, a former journalist turned screenwriter, who penned the script specifically for Crawford. Initially, Republic, known as the most prestigious of the minor studios, offered Nicholas Ray a contract, giving him considerable creative freedom despite the film's modest budget. Ray, in turn, hired Philip Yorton for a comprehensive rewrite of the script. Yorton later revealed that his collaboration with Ray was more focused on the script's structural aspects, such as designing settings like the saloon and refining the geometrical relationships between different locations. Apart from being a critique of mob rule, the movie has been analyzed as a manifestation of repressed feelings concerning masculinity and the fear of female power. This interpretation stems from the onset conflicts and challenges faced by the main stars, particularly Joan Crawford and Sterling Hayden. Mark Cousins, a film commentator, articulated this perspective in his work The Story of Film. In this classic, the age difference between Crawford and her love interests Hayden and Brady adds depth to the storyline. The film's exploration of gender dynamics and power struggles, combined with the intriguing behind-the-scenes context, makes Johnny Guitar a compelling watch. The movie's themes continue to resonate with audiences today, making it a timeless piece of cinema. You can't stay on the fence no longer. It's not just Emma and McIvers. The men are fed up. Show us the way to the lair and... Released in 1954, Johnny Guitar quickly made its mark in film history due to its unique storyline and unconventional portrayal of gender roles. Directed by Nicholas Ray, this classic broke away from traditional Western films, offering a more psychological take on the genre. The movie's distinct visual style and innovative narrative structure have had a profound impact on future filmmakers. Its emphasis on character development over action sequences influenced several directors who followed, contributing to the evolution of the Western genre into more complex narratives. One notable director inspired by Johnny Guitar was Martin Scorsese, who praised the film for its boldness and originality. He particularly admired how the movie subverted typical masculine stereotypes, presenting strong female leads like Joan Crawford's Vienna, a role that defied conventions of the time. This classic also paved the way for other revisionist westerns such as Butch Cassidy and The Sundance Kid, which further explored anti-rows and non-traditional plot structures. Additionally, contemporary filmmaker David Lynch has cited Johnny Guitar as one of his favorite films, drawing parallels between its stylized imagery and thematic ambiguity with his own work. Moreover, beyond influencing cinema, 
Johnny Guitar left an indelible imprint on popular culture. Musicians including Elvis Costello and Renee Fleming have paid homage to the film through song, while artists like Jem Finer created installations inspired by the movie's memorable saloon setting. Even today, Johnny Guitar continues to inspire new generations of creatives across different mediums. Good luck, Vienna. I'm sorry, Emma. Your brother was a very... Transitioning from the behind-the-scenes drama of almost starring in another film, Joan Crawford and director Nicholas Ray collaborated on this classic. Peggy Lee's touch can be felt through the theme song she penned and performed for the closing credits. Critic Dennis Schwartz drew parallels to the beauty and the beast, likening Sterling Hayden to the beauty. I'm going after you. They got a lot of my money too, Emma. The Marshal's right, you'll only slow us up. I'm riding with you. After leaving Archeo Studios, Nicholas Ray directed his first project, Johnny Guitar. The film features Sterling Hayden as the character Johnny Guitar, who plays the folk-tuned old Joe Clark for the dancers. Despite Hayden's admission that he couldn't play guitar or sing well, the movie gained popularity. Hayden had a difficult time on set, as he was at odds with co-star Joan Crawford during the day and dealing with personal issues at night. The film marks a significant point in Ray's career, showcasing his directorial style and ability to work with challenging circumstances. In the filming of Johnny Guitar, Joan Crawford had specific requirements for her close-up shots. She demanded that they be taken in a studio where lighting could be strictly controlled. This meant that no close-ups of her were captured while on location. The movie also references the Pecos River, which flows through New Mexico and Texas. This river holds significance as it was used as a reference point for Yosemite Sam, the notorious bad hombre in Warner Brothers cartoons. Crawford's influence extends beyond Johnny Guitar. She is profiled in the book Johnny Mac Brown's Saddle Gals by Bobby Copeland, highlighting her impact on the Western genre. In essence, the production of Johnny Guitar was marked by unique demands, intriguing references, and lasting influence. I don't want to owe you anything. In Vienna's office in the movie Johnny Guitar, a bust of German composer Ludwig van Beethoven is displayed. Ernest Borgnine, who appears in this classic, has been in five films recognized by the Library of Congress for their cultural, historical, or aesthetic significance. These films include From Here to Eternity, Johnny Guitar, Bad Day at Black Rock, Marty, and The Wild Bunch. The film's title song, played during the end credits, was specifically composed to increase the chances of an Academy Award nomination for Best Original Song. The music was by Victor Young, and Peggy Lee provided the lyrics and vocals. However, the tune did not make the final list of five nominees for 1954, possibly due to the studio behind the film, Republic Pictures, not having enough Academy members to secure a nomination. Inches. What's going on with you two? Just what you see, friend. Oh, you picked the wrong... In the movie Johnny Guitar, Dennis Hopper is said to have made an uncredited appearance, although he later denied this claim. The film also features Ward Bond, who, according to a popular myth, was set to meet singer Johnny Horton in Dallas on the day he died to sign a contract for Wagon Train. However, Bond was not a producer and had no role in casting. Notably, this western marked Joan Crawford's first appearance in the genre since Montana Moon in 1930. You're gonna find you and your women and your kids squeezed between barbed wires and fence posts. In just 44 days, albeit 10 more than initially planned, this classic went from pre-production to post-production. With a budget estimated around 2,500,000, it boasted an impressive cast led by Joan Crawford. Speaking of Crawford, she holds the distinction of having graced six films included in the esteemed National Film Registry, among them Ben-Hur, Grand Hotel, The Women, Mildred Pierce, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, and yes, this film. Behind the scenes, things were equally intriguing. Writer Philip Jordan played a crucial role, giving director Nicholas Ray a helping hand in revising the story to expand Crawford's character's significance. Their camaraderie stemmed from a fateful night where Ray stood up for Jordan during a heated altercation involving a drunk Frank Lovejoy. As for how Ray responded while receiving explanations about the screenplay, he would simply turn away and remain silent upon completion of discussions. No good. You, know, you and Emma would make a fine couple. Did Johnny Guitar leave a lasting impression on you? This classic has touched many lives, influencing perspectives on cinema 
and resonating with audiences in ways few other films can. Perhaps you found yourself drawn into the storyline, captivated by the compelling characters and their struggles, or maybe it was the groundbreaking performances that left you in awe. Whatever your experience, we would love to hear about it. Think back to when you first saw this movie, what emotions did it evoke? How did it change your outlook on westerns or even filmmaking as a whole? Share your stories with us, tell us about the moments that stood out, the lines that stayed with you, and the scenes that moved you. Your insights could inspire others to explore this timeless piece of art, and who knows? You might just find someone who shares your passion for this unforgettable show. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more opportunities to engage in discussions around iconic films like Johnny Guitar. Together, let's celebrate these cherished pieces of cinema history. We're riding together. What about it, Corey?